Hello everybody and welcome back to another one of those videos where I talk about updates in the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress coming from Toady1 and Kit Fox. Do I say that too fast? Genuine question. Anyway, uh, we have a roadmap from Tarn Adams covering the direction and leading up to release and what's left. So I'm going to read it as it came in in text format via email and then we're going to talk about it. Let's get started. Hello! Work has progressed to the point where we feel that we can share a plan for the next several months of development, all the way up to release. It has been a long road, of course, and I'm sorry it has taken so much time to get to this point. But as it turns out, there was an awful lot of stuff to do, and there's still quite a bit left to go. We need to maintain flexibility and react to feedback or emergent cir emerging circumstances, so the following can't be set in stone, but hopefully it offers something of an idea of what's up. I know that there are various levels of patience out there, and all we can do is keep it, keep at it and try to plan the next steps carefully. So here is the rough roadmap. One, finish the menus that haven't been up upgraded yet. These include the graphics and the layout for justice, health, diplomacy, and hauling. These aren't small tasks, each will take weeks. We'll be working with Jacob during this period on the sprites, and we need to update throughout the, the on the sprites that we need to update throughout the project. He submitted the new weapons recently, for instance, and I also got a bunch a, a batch of music from the composer. It's important to get these things incorporated in a timely fashion so everybody can keep working. Two, as the menus are finished and the graphics updates are completed. Uh, we'll need to move on to more important interface and usability improvements. Tooltips everywhere, X's to close windows, hotkey support, etc. Some of these can be done fairly quickly, but a few are chunky additions, and there are lots of them to do. After this point is after this part is done, the game should be much easier to get into. At the same time, we'll be continuing to add graphics, flows, and ocean, and beaches, and some more shadows, etc. Three, all of this time, of course, we've been fixing old bugs and making new bugs and fixing them. And here we'll need to focus and spend some quality time with them so that we have as smooth a launch as possible. Four, we're not sure what level of Steam Workshop will be needed for modding support and it needs investigation. Five. The old ASCII version ha has other game modes, Adventure Mode and Legends Mode and Arena Mode. We've made significant progress on Legends Mode, but we haven't done anything with Adventure Mode and Arena Mode yet. We also have the classic ASCII mode to support. We are also working on Mac and Linux builds. Six, there's the matter of Steam achievements and the other various Steam features we'd like to support. Whatever people are into here, eventually. When we finish the first three points, we'll have a playable fort game on Windows. The path ahead is now shorter than the path behind. And looking at the amount of graphics left to produce and the amount of menus to update, it looks like the earliest possible launch date would be fall. Many of the things from 5 or 6 will delay the launch significantly. And this leads to some of the very hard questions indeed. I know most of you want us to launch the game as soon as feasible, so we've been thinking about what it might look like to do some of number 5 and number 6 post-launch. We'd been hoping to have more of these items done faster, of course, but a few things have happened. Well, 2020 and 2021 happened. So also my original plan for how classic mode might be implemented has only partially panned out. I made an ASCII-friendly interface layer, which will be a great help, but I underestimated how long it would take to retool all of the smaller clickable buttons into an ASCII-friendly state. A few menus will need to be redone from scratch, and my current thinking is that doing ASCII versions of the menus alone would take a few months, and I've only been accounting for keeping and adapting the ASCII glyphs, and we've, ar we've already had in place with some alterations to support, for example, the ability to see multiple Z-levels but the menus have changed so much that it's now a larger project. And the question then is to, do we want to delay the initial release to do this or launch and then do a free update after? Adventure mode is straightforward in its way. I don't expect to have any real development gotchas, but it does have dozens of menus that, and some of them are quite complex. So similarly, that'll be months of work to complete. 
It's an important part of the game and has figured into some of the most well-known DF community stories, but it's also as separate enough from Fortress Mode that we can that we can conceive of letting people get their hands on Fort Mode first. Delay or launch? We'll be pondering at this and considering feedback, and we'll eventually get to everything. It's just a matter of the best order to do things with a different right answer uh, for different players. Fr frustrating en frustratingly enough. Although I am grateful how patient people have been in general, especially with everything going on, and we're thankful for the support we've gotten from the community and Kit Fox, and we'll try to get this initial release together. We'll continue to keep you posted with regular news updates. Tarn. All right, it's time for me to chime in here. So, before I say anything, I just want to say thank you very much to Tarn and Kit Fox for all of your hard work on the project thus far. And now I'm going to ramble a little bit. So I personally think that launching without Adventure Mode would be a damn shame. I think Adventure Mode is one of the coolest modes in the game next to Fortress Mode, which is, you know, kind of unfair to say. I think the game kind of goes together in three parts. And I think without some of those parts, the game becomes significantly less intriguing to me. It becomes a lot more of a, oh, it's just a base builder game. And unfortunately, right now, we live in a world, or fortunately, right now, we live in a world where there is a lot of competition in that space. There is a, a lot of games that are kind of building up and coming out, or are already out. Even more experimental titles like The First Men, which has a demo available right now at the time of recording, and games like uh, King Under the Mountain, uh, games like uh, Odd Realm, and uh, so many other games that kind of fill that field already. The thing that Dwarf Fortress really has against the competition that's extremely unique is its world generation, its legendary status for procedural generation, and its ability to retire a fortress and continue to explore the world independently of that fortress. And I think with that huge chunk of the game removed, Dwarf Fortress loses a lot. I've always been kind of a fan of releasing the whole game at once instead of piecemeal. I think that if a portion of the game is not released as part of the uh, premium package, number one, there's a better game for you in the ASCII versions, so it's less reason to pick it up. And number two, you have a new audience of people that are missing a huge chunk of and a very important chunk of Dwarf Fortress that makes it super cool. Dwarf Fortress is a game where you can build a a fortress in a living world and then take that fortress, retire it, and then go and explore it as a adventurer from the outside. And I think that that is a really, really, really cool dynamic that the game would be hugely losing if it got delayed. Uh, as for part six, which is Steam achievements and the other Steam features, I think leaving out Steam achievements wouldn't be a huge loss. However, it would lose you certain players. Just as an example, two of my teammates... Uh, on Twitch that I work with almost every day uh, are more inclined to play games with achievements because they really, really like unlocking achievements. And I would like to see people explore the game to its fullest. And if it's missing a huge mode at launch and a huge chunk of features at launch, I feel that a lot of people will be less likely to return. Um, I'm very worried that removing a such a huge piece of the game may cause irreparable damage in the long term because uh, Steam, at the very least, itch.io not so much, but Steam is very fickle in that if a game has a bad launch, it's really difficult to recover from it. Of course, there are some examples of like No Man's Sky and things that had poor launches that fixed that over a long period of time, but I'm very cautious about launching with two-thirds of a game, because that's what launching without adventure mode really means. As far as ASCII and the classic versions releasing alongside of it, for me, I don't think that it's the biggest loss, but I do understand that there are plenty of ASCII-only players that are not planning on purchasing this version, or planning on purchasing it in support and then not playing it. I do feel for those people that they should be getting the same features that we've all been waiting for, uh, because frankly, this redesign has taken a very long time, and there's no dancing around that. As for the possible release date of fall, 
if it's another six months to get adventure mode done, I would say wait until 2023 and rela release it in spring. But maybe that's just me. I want to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, of course, Tarn Adams is also taking feedback uh, for this post, so maybe move over to the forums and take a look or send him an email. That being said, you could also uh, sign up to the Kit Fox newsletter and get these new updates as they come out, or you can just wait for me to post a video. It's been a long ride so far with these news videos, and I just want to say thank you for coming along with me. Uh, if you, like I just said, uh, don't get these in your inbox, just sign up to the Kit Fox newsletter down in the description. And uh, if you like these videos and you want to see more of them and you want to see them just as consistently and quickly, I have a Patreon. My patrons are flashing across the screen. And if you want to help me out, that's the way to do that. You could also come watch my streams live. Uh, I should be live around the time you're watching this. Started late to record this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we'll have Tarn on the stream again soon. So we'll get a video of that up in the next couple weeks. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.